Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Since the early 1960s, the United States has used underground missile silos or missile launch facilities to store and launch missiles. A missile silo is an underground vertical structure covered by a 110-ton blast door on the surface, which looks like a big concrete slab. One cannot see much of what's beside the blast door, but there's a bunch of other stuff you can never think is included in such a nuclear base. So, what does the inside of a missile silo actually look like? Let's witness it together. The United States operates around 450 ready-to-fire intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, from underground launch facilities at different locations. Before launching an ICBM, the launch crew carries an extensive pre-launch check to ensure that the missile and all the related systems are in working order. The workers enter the silo through the blast door using an elevator and carefully examine the body of the ICBM. Within the silo, there's a passage to the launcher equipment room where the launch crew inspects the missile's guidance system, propulsion, and safety mechanisms. Once all the systems are verified, the launch crew receives the final authorization to proceed with the launch. The launch sequence begins with a countdown, and during this phase, all personnel are evacuated from the immediate vicinity of the silo for safety reasons. The ICBM is launched from its underground silo, and the launch crew monitors and changes the missile's trajectory until it hits the target. Every missile silo contains a built-in launch control center. However, in the case of ICBMs like the Minuteman 3, the launch crew is not located at each silo separately. Instead, two launch officers are stationed in an underground launch control center, connected via hardened cables to 10 different silos, typically known as a flight. Mm -hmm. Every launch facility is located 10 to 20 miles away from another in order to protect a flight in the best possible way against a hostile attack. Besides, launch control centers are a part of the missile alert facility, where launch crews stay active 24-7 and maintain reliable communication with the President and Secretary of Defense. The ICBMs can also be launched from submarines operating in the world's oceans. Sea-based ICBMs are an essential component of a country's nuclear triad and play a crucial role in a nation's nuclear deterrence.
Advanced ICBMs, such as the Trident II, are equipped with multiple independently targeted re-entry vehicles, or MIRVs, allowing them to carry multiple warheads, each capable of striking separate targets. The U.S. Navy's Ohio-class Ballistic Missile Submarines, or SSBNs, have multiple launch tubes. each capable of carrying and deploying multiple Trident II missiles. The launch process is quite simple. The crew initiates the launch sequence to open the launch tube doors, located at the submarine's hull. The missile is ejected from the launch tube with compressed air, and the rocket motor ignites after it breaks the surface. The missile later attains the altitude and position required to follow the pre-programmed flight trajectory toward its target. The most feared missile in the entire submarine arsenal is the 1,500 pounds UGM-84 Harpoon missile that features a warhead capable of sinking even the largest Navy vessels. It is encapsulated in a specially designed container so it can be launched from underwater via one of the submarine's torpedo tubes. The crew uses several machines for handling and loading this powerful weapon. And once loaded, the missile is ready for launch. God's iron, God's lot, God's iron, God's lot. During the sinking exercises, like Sink X, torpedoes are launched on the old, damaged, or derelict vessels to get a real sense of how their weapons would work in actual combat. The torpedoes cause devastating strikes, often causing ships to begin sinking after a single direct hit. The United States' most feared and destructive ship class is the destroyer. These warships are renowned for being fast, maneuverable, and capable of traveling long distances. Although destroyers have a large arsenal, including surface-to-air missiles and deck-mounted cannons, one of their primary weapons is the torpedoes. These self-propelled weapons can travel underwater to destroy hostile ships and submarines. Every two years, several countries get together to conduct exercise RIMPAC that features several events, including torpedo operations where ships practice with torpedoes and sometimes even sink decommissioned vessels. crew load 20-foot-long Mark 48 torpedoes that weigh almost two tons and boast a firing range of up to 30 miles. Due to their explosive capabilities, it takes several crew members to load a single Mark 48 into the torpedo tube properly. Torpedoes are launched from surface vessels, like the USS Chancellorville, with rotatable torpedo batteries.
there's a special door on the side of the ship's hull that opens to release the torpedo. The torpedo battery fires the torpedo into the water and rotates back to its initial position as the whole door closes. This entire process is completed in a few seconds and does not involve any human intervention until it's time to reload the torpedo tubes. Since 2017, the United States Office of Naval Research, or ONR, has been investing billions of dollars into projects to develop state-of-the-art weapons. However, there are still several factors to consider before they can be deployed on naval warships. One such weapon is the railgun that works like a cannon, using electromagnetic forces to launch high-velocity projectiles at speeds of more than 4,500 miles per hour. Instead of using explosives, railguns rely on the speed of mass and kinetic energy of the projectile to inflict damage on the target. The gun's barrel is around 30 feet long, and when it's fired, an electrical current is sent down the first rail, across the armature, and then down the other rail. This creates a magnetic field around the armature, generating tremendous propulsion force. Firing a railgun is not simple because it requires huge amounts of electricity, which is why batteries compatible with the railgun must be set up ahead of the weapon itself. For this reason, engineers and researchers monitor the railgun from a specially designed control room when the gun is fired and collect relative data. According to the results, the current weapon design can only be fired from the highly advanced Zemwalk class destroyer. The energy for firing the railgun has varied over the years. On January 31st, 2008, the U.S. Navy tested a 10.64 megajoule railgun that fired a projectile at a speed of 8,270 feet per second. The projectiles of the railgun can cover up to 100 miles. Therefore, live fire testing is conducted over the ocean to prevent possible damage to infrastructure or loss of life. With extended ranges and improved precision, modern naval weapon systems will change the course of naval warfare. The naval forces will be able to engage targets from a safer distance and with higher accuracy, reducing the risk to their own ships while increasing their lethality. That's the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.